Alright uh, everybody, it's your best pal, Revolver84 here. Uh, the day we're going to talk about uh, staff management on Metal Gear Solid 5. So your staff management, you, you bring up your iDroid, you left click to mother base and you go down to staff management. Loading, which takes an unusually long time for a game um, of modern times and you've got your different choices up there. Um, and then up there are your different types of unit that your staff can go into and above them you can see the, the scores of what each individual unit was so your combat units score 27 the research and development teams 27 base development units 21 support units 22 you can get the idea um, so before we go on to how you manage individual guys on each unit we're going to talk about why it's important that the get right guys in the right area. So them scores there that I've just been talking about are the scores for obviously your, your individual area, your combat unit ability and your, your research and development ability. And the reason they're important is because to develop new equipment for y yourself, for your buddy or your helicopter, they nearly always have requirements relating to how high an individual unit is. So I'll give you an example. If I wanted to... Let's see... Oh, I don't know. Let's see if I wanted to develop this one here. So you can see there I needed an Intel team level of 12 and a research and development team level of 12. Well, that corresponds directly with what we've just been sh discussing there, so that would be research and development level of 12 there would be need to be able to research it which is why it was allowed to be researched and the way you make that score higher or lower is based on the t members assigned to that unit so you've got all these different guys here and I have to say kudos to Kojima and and uh, Konami for making each individual person look different. I mean, it's a, it's just a small little th detail but it really is appreciated by, by the fans, you know, it's, it's the little things that matter going off track so he, obviously you've got your list of guys here um, and what you need to consider is on the right hand side you have no, sorry next to the guy's picture you have his abilities and obviously your abilities are scored with um, S being as high as you can possibly get as a next specialist then A++, A+, A+, A all the way down to E and obviously the higher the grades are the more qualified they are in that given area but in addition to that as well, they've also got skills. So you can see Huey there, Huey Emmerich, um, is a bipedal weapons developer. And it's important to have some the, the skills that complement that skill that, that person in the relevant sort of area. So for example, let's have a look here. So we're in... Do, 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 get a good example. Oh, I'll come back to him in a minute. Oh, I've got it. I'm too well organized. <laughs> ah, no. What's an easy one to show you? There. So, in my medical team, you've got a skill there, physician, um, which reduces the amount of time people spend in sick pay, obviously, if he's on your medical team. Now, it makes sense that a guy with that sort of skill would be in your medical team. Usually, their ability is really high as well anyway, so in this case, this cannibal mastiff has a has an A-plus medical score, so it makes sense that you'd put him on there anyway. But obviously, if he's got a skill that complements that as well, definitely something that you need to consider. Now, one of the guys I was looking at before, um... Well, it wasn't him, but something like this. Uh, so some of the people on here have a skill called Troublemaker. Um, causes trouble within unit, making staff sick. In this case, he's an unsanitary little shite. Um, clearly not washing his hands after he's been in the lab and stuff like that. It's a filthy beast. And people like that cause morale... Um, to drop for that unit, um, but in addition to that, you also have other troublemakers such as, let's see if I can find one. Come back to him in a second. Do 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 do. Oh, every time I want to find one, that's not there.
beer. Every once in a while you'll have one of these kids. Violence. Causing trouble within the unit. Injuring staff. Now, you've got to be really smart where you put these guys. These guys, if there's more than one in any given unit, they'll scrap with each other. They'll cause bother, they'll fight, and they'll spend just as much time in your, in your medical centre getting... Re you know, recovering from injury, then they will actually helping yourself um, and contributing to your cause. So the way of negating that is by getting a do 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 do. A diplomat in that particular unit. So in this case, obviously, lessens instances of trouble within the unit. So for every two guys that you have that are troublemakers, if you have one diplomat in there, it negates the, the damage that they do to morale and reduces the chances that they're going to cause fighting. Now, I can get to a point where even with the most, like, a unit absolutely full of diplomats, if you've got an ear hole on your team, it's just, that's life sometimes, you know what I mean? You've got to, If you've got an ear hole on there, sometimes you just need to get rid of them. Do you know what I mean? Um... Like I say, the general rule is for every two troublemakers, you should have one diplomat in the team. But, um, yeah, it's sometimes like even that's not enough, and sometimes it's, it's simple enough just to just to kick them out entirely. So, which moves us on to our, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is how you assign guys to different uh, different teams. So, what you can do for uh, any given guy is you can click on... Uh, Sorry, any, any different team. Sorry, you can click on R2. It brings up this screen here, and you can select all the different skills you want to send, the mission statuses and stuff, and um, intelligence ability, this, that, and that. And you can uh, search for it. So let's say, for example, we're in, we're in R&D, and we want to search for R&T's team's suitability. So you click on that, and you expect all the guys at the top to have R&D really high. So in this case they're all A's pluses pluses or A pluses. As you go further down they're obviously lower and lower and lower to the point that they should be really poor at the bottom. D's. Yeah, he's a nobody. So you you can make sure that you've got the most appropriate guys in any in individual unit based on their score on that. Um, but in addition um, like I say, you've got to consider their skill sets as well if you've got to move troublemakers around. And as I said earlier on in the video as well, your skills got to match the the unit type. Now in this particular instance here, Titanium Gator, he's a surgeon. I mean, alright, he's skill level C, but he's, st he's still a surgeon assigned to medical team to hasten recovery injuries to those in sick bay. So having them in the research and design team it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So what you do there is you press square to highlight them. It changes the, bo the box down at the bottom with the little person from 0 to 1. And you can highlight multiple people. And you press X. And then you change them to whichever unit you want them to go to. So in this case it would make sense for the surgeon to go to the medical team. Oh, as it happens that the unit's full. So, <laughs> so first things first, we're going to go to the medical team and remove someone. So let's find a knacker, this guy here. Oh, in fact, they are all full. Oh, that's typical. That's, um, that's, uh, I should probably have prepared for this. Right. Oh, my goodness. Alright, so what we do is we highlight him, press X, and like I say, if you want to move any particular person into a different unit, you just press the button and it, and it moves them in. Now, something that I hadn't considered before I started the video, to be fair, considered everything else, was on the right hand side there, where it says 65 slash 65, so the one on the right, the 65 on the right, is your maximum capacity of that unit. That is based on how many command unit, uh, command platforms that you've purchased and, and built for your mother base and the 65 on the left is the total number of people within that unit so as you can see all mine are actually full up I mean, unfortunately I have got a few knackers in space like I need to go through and kick some out but in this particular instance I want to get rid of this guy because he's no good so I'll just click on dismiss fire selected staff member staff, bye he gets booted off the uh, the forward operating base into the sea, swims in the seashells and dies. Boo hoo! Um, and you can take a lot of time doing it and you can get it right. Um, 
and especially if there's a particular development that you want to get which needs a particularly high score you can move guys around so that these scores for your individual units progress um, to the score needed that you can develop that individual item ready for to snake to use now that's the proper way to play and it can take some time and let's face facts you didn't purchase this in bed chicken to do with a micro management so an easy way to do it is press to auto assign which is r3 and then all staff Yep, and it assigns all staff, or at least it thinks it assigns all staff, um, to units applicable to their abilities. But like I say, that doesn't consider their skills. So what we'll have in, for example, base development here is you'll have you'll have people in here with yeah, maybe high base development scores, but with skills that uh, don't complement it at all. So if yeah, so there we go. So clearly that guy should be on the medical team. Goes without saying. Uh, me medical team still for it happens so yeah so auto assign is a very quick way of doing it if you want if you don't want the hassle of going through and doing it properly that's what you can do but i wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't complement the skills to the un to the unit it only complements their abilities to the unit um and you don't get your best from your staff so that's it and in, in a nutshell um to, like I say, to increase your ability to have more members of staff, you've got to go on your base facilities, you've got to build appropriate appropriate platforms. In this case, you need to build a command platform. The more command platforms you have, the more staff you can have. The more staff you can have, the more um, the higher your unit score is. It also means that you've got a better chance of doing things like your, your, your combat deployment missions. You've got a better chance of pulling them off if you've got better assigned soldiers and such like. And that's your overview of staff management on Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Um, quick, pretty fast, quite rapid and breezy sort of explanation there. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything you think I've missed, can you let us know in the comments below? Um, if, you, if there's anything you'd like to say about from Metal Gear Solid or any video game in particular, can you let us know? I am trying to reach 50 subscribers because um, as soon as I get 50 subscribers I'm going to do a special one-off and um, we'll do a couple of thanks for all the long-term sort of subscribers to my channel and I'll get to give you a list of the 10 favorite video games of all time of, of my own personal opinions so that won't be based on like um, sales or anything like that that'll be based on enjoyment and impact that they had for the genre or impact that they had for the medium as a whole um, of which I'm sure the original Metal Gear will definitely be in there um, so if you do like this video and you want to see more please subscribe and like I say I'm even for that magical 50 mark for that special video um, I would appreciate it thanks very much for watching cheers